Hey, in this video I'm going to be talking about the PCV system and running a quick experiment with it. So let's get into it. Alright, so I wanted to take a little bit of time here to talk about how the PCV system works because I've gotten a few questions, some more critical on this system, and um, I just wanted to show, explain why I did what I did. So, here is basically from the factory, this fitting. So normally you will have a one-way valve, like this. This one happens to have, if you can hear that, anyway. Uh, it's a little ball that is, um, I don't think that this one is spring-loaded, but Basically, um, it's in your valve cover, and there's a lot of baffling on the inside of the valve cover, so this doesn't go directly to where your cams are. There is, um, the baffling that is there is to prevent, basically, oil from splashing directly out, because you have one uh, PCV, um, which is positive crank uh, crankcase ventilation here, and one right here. So this one, uh, and the second generation Genesis will have a different looking um, valve, but they still function in the same way. So basically, because this is connected to your intake manifold, that little ball, um, anytime it gets pressurized, it gets pushed back and it seals that up. Now, if this ever gets clogged or anything like that and it doesn't fully seal, you're essentially having creating a boost leak through here, and you're also going to be pressurizing through the head, which this is your only other vent. So basically, when you are always when you're at wide open throttle or actually any level of boost, so you could have one psi for argument's sake here, and this ball closes. So your only vent under any load will be this side. So what I have done is with this block off, I've removed this piece because the only time that this vent is open is during idling and a steady state on the highway. So essentially taking this valve or taking this vent using the stock tube and going around back to the intake what I have done is prioritize the venting while under boost because the turbocharger is always sucking air in it will help evacuate from this side and on this side uh, during high load conditions or any any load basically whereas this is prioritizing idle and very low load situations because only when there is vacuum will it pull that ball open and I don't know how much vacuum it takes but it pulls that ball open and then it allows to vent to the intake manifold. So there are many different uh, there are many different variables to this. So if you have a stock motor and how healthy it is, and what kind of turbo you run, and uh, or if you have a built motor and what size your piston ring gap is, and tons of different scenarios. Uh, for <clears throat> why you w might want to run this or running it where it, it comes out and goes to a catch can and then comes back in. So this is just a different way of doing it. Um, but the one thing that you need to make sure of is because then basically at idle, there are some instances where you may get small amounts of smoke because basically any amount of positive crankcase uh, pressures will mean that you're going to be pushing oil past certain seals. The most common one that I've seen is basically the turbo seal and the reason that it happens on turbos is because the seals are not designed to have um, positive pressure because basically once the oil drops in, it's essentially gravity fed, and, and then it drains through. So some videos that I've watched, the biggest things that they have talked about that creates 
actually a backup of oil in there and you get that smoking is because um, your drain isn't sufficient. Now I have an OEM style turbo so the OEM drain is sufficient. If you have an upgraded turbo you need to make sure that your drain has a large enough ID inner diameter that when it comes out of the turbo it's not going to back up inside and also on the block that there isn't a lip where the drain is down there because otherwise it will hit that and that will also cause it to back up. Uh, aftermarket kits it's also very important that your turbo is perfectly in the 12 o'clock position or as close as you can get it because that will help the oil drain back down. So to summarize the way that I have it set up may not be ideal for everyone because I am prioritizing the venting during load conditions. Under no load this, and I've never argued that this is superior under no load, this will be far superior. And uh, I'll set up the tripod and we'll and I'll actually hook up I just have a cheap gauge. We'll hook it up. I'll show you what it's on this side uh, because that goes around to the turbo and to pre-turbo I should say because that is the intake. Uh, and then I'll show you, I'll just hook up to um, a vacuum line that I have here going to my pull-off valve because I don't want to take out my intake air temp sensor for the Haltech. So instead of hooking directly up to this, I'll just hook up to this. But in general, idling I've seen is between 18 to 20 uh, inches of mercury, which I think is around uh, negative 9 to 10 PSI. So they'll never pull a perfect vacuum, which is negative 14.5. Um, engines will basically never do that. But um, that's why if you're under no load or a light enough load where you're not building positive pressure, this method will be superior to this one. However, if you are under any sort of load from one to whatever your max PSI is, you will have two vents instead of one vent. That is when this method becomes more effective because the turbo is, since it's sucking in, it's helping to evacuate that positive um, crankcase pressure through this vent, which is always open, and this one, which I now have set up as always open. So under idling and low load conditions, this is effectively a um, I don't want to call it a vent to atmosphere, but it is very close because as you'll see in the second part, the vacuum on this is extremely low. I don't think I discussed so far is that um, getting rid of this tube basically eliminates um, a source where you could potentially get uh, any oil 
blow by through here and yes I get that if you run it to a catch can and then run it to here ideally you shouldn't have any that's in there um, but also that um, it prevents uh, any potential risk of um, you leaking boost back through here because um, one thing that um, basically engineering teaches you is that there's no such thing as a perfect seal so just like when you do a boost leak test you always watch the needle and it slowly drops down because um, there's going to be a leak somewhere and if you're chasing that perfection um, you're never going to get there but um, for me this was something that I wanted to do um, and it may not be for everybody like I've said before so I just wanted to make this and clear up any sort of confusion about how uh, the PCV system works on the Genesis Coupe and it works very similarly on many modern vehicles. Um, older vehicles it can be a little bit different but the concepts are still the same. Oh, and one thing that I forgot is that um, when I was reading with this gauge, um, I'm only doing this testing at idle, so even if we're going at a constant uh, speed, like let's say on the highway, um, I'm just assuming that the um, vacuum, essentially that's being pulled by pre-turbo here, uh, that's going to this port, is effectively the same at idle. So that's the one flaw that I can think of with this experiment only performing it at idle.